Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some of the best emulation that we've ever seen on a mobile device. And all of this really stems from the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. When it comes to Android and mobile performance, the Snapdragon chip is far above the rest. I mean, it's definitely putting out much better performance than anything we've seen in another Android handset on the market so far. CPU performance has been upgraded from the Gen 2 on single and multi, and especially GPU performance. So far, I've got my hands on a couple devices powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but the only one I've been able to show off so far due to embargoes is the Xiaomi 14 Pro. It's a great performer. This model here has 12 gigabytes of LP ddr 5 x RAM. And uh, if you're interested in checking out my original video, I'll leave a link for it in the description. Now, if you're not into the Xiaomi brand, don't worry because there are a ton of other devices coming with the 8 Gen 3. Uh, Samsung is slated to be using that chip in their Galaxy S24 or whatever they're going to be calling it. OnePlus 12 Pro has that 8 Gen 3. And moving down the list, you can see there's a bunch of gaming phones also releasing with this chip. And uh, I think that's where we're going to see the best performance, given that a lot of the gaming phones out there do have active cooling or some type of cooling system they've implemented to keep that chip nice and chilly. Now, before we jump into the testing, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This is a 4 nanometer chip, and they've set it up a bit different from the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. We've got one Cortex-X4 core running at up to 3.3 gigahertz. This is our big core that's going to give us some really great performance. Five A720 cores running at 3.2, and two Cortex A520 cores running at 2.3. Along with all of this, we've got that upgraded GPU. It's the Adreno 750, and yeah, this is an amazing performer. So we're going to jump right into a little bit of emulation. We're going to start out light here and then work our way up. And first on the list, we've got Dreamcast. So of course, Dreamcast is going to run, but I want to go into the settings here. I'm using the Redream emulator, and as you can see, I am upscaled to 3840 by 2880. So we've got this emulator totally maxed out here and it's gonna run any of these Dreamcast games as long as they're compatible with the emulator. It's gonna run them at full speed. You're not gonna have an issue here. Next up, we've got some PSP emulation, starting off with an easier to run game. This one natively ran at 30 FPS, but if we head into the settings, we're using the Vulcan back in, 10X resolution, no hacks whatsoever. Going up to 10x on your phone's built-in screen really isn't necessary. I mean, it's over the resolution of most phones out there. But if we were able to connect this or whatever device you have to a larger display, we could definitely go up to 4K. And a lot of these new phones do support display over USB Type-C. I really just took it up this high to see if it would handle it. And obviously, with this easier to run game, not a problem. So let's take it up a notch. And if you're into any kind of emulation on Android, you know these are the harder to run games. Ghost of Sparta, Chains of Olympus, they really give lower end chips a run for its money, but to see this at 10X resolution, and I've also got CPU float running, so you can see that our GPU still hasn't hit that 900 megahertz wall, we're actually not even maxing this chip out right now. So it's actually really impressive to see this kind of performance, and you know, if we could go up with the resolution, it would probably handle it just fine. And a lot of people aren't going to be running these games at 10x, so you can definitely expect lower clocks on that CPU and GPU, and in turn, get better battery life out of your phone. Now it's time to move over to some GameCube emulation, and I thought that this was the most impressive thing about this chip. So we've got Automotalista running with the Dolphin emulator. Right now, we're at 1080p or 3x resolution using the OpenGL backend. Just to put this into perspective for you, the Snapdragon Gen 2 can handle this game at 720p pretty well, but right now on the Gen 3, we're at 1080, and if I head over to my settings, we'll go to Graphic Settings, Enhancements, you can see 3x, but we're going to take this up to 4x. So 2560 by 2112, 4x resolution, OpenGL back in with the Snapdragon chips and the Dolphin emulator. OpenGL is definitely where it's at. You can try Vulkan, but I don't think you're going to get this kind of performance. So now, we're at 4x resolution, OpenGL back in with the Dolphin emulator on an Android device running Automotalista at full speed. And this is the official Dolphin build. It's not a hacked version or anything like that. So this is one of my go-tos. It's definitely a harder one to emulate on Android devices. But there are more that, you know, really take a toll on these chips. 
like F-Zero GX, but we can still run this at 4x resolution using that OpenGL backend. And we're on the hardest to emulate track, this is Firefield, lots of stuff going on right now. And if you've got an older chipset, go ahead, try to boot this up, go to this track with the OpenGL backend and see how high you can take the resolution. And to give you an idea, look at that GPU clock with this game. We're now at 900 megahertz. So that kind of gives you an idea of how hard this is pushing the GPU to upscale this high with this game. And the final GameCube game I wanted to test here was Rogue Squadron 2. Now, unfortunately, we can't do 4X with this, but we can do 1080p. 3X Vulcan back in on an Android device with Rogue Squadron 2. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 can almost handle 720p. We get a lot of dips, but this is a real steady 1080p here. Next up, we've got some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. And with both of the games that I tested here, we're at 4X resolution. If you take a look in the top right hand corner, you'll see the resolution will change between the two because they use kind of different aspect ratios. And at 4X on an Android device with a nice screen, Gran Turismo 4 looks phenomenal. We also had to test out God of War 2, still at 4X. And with this, I also used the OpenGL backend. Didn't need to swap over to Vulkan. You can see we're over 1080p up in the top left hand corner. And we've also got a constant 60, well 59.46, I'm gonna call that 60. It is super smooth here. I've never been able to run this specific game with the Ether SX2 emulator at 4X on any Android device. And of course, using the devices that I have, I didn't want to throw everything in here, but so far we're seeing some amazing performance with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And personally, I can't wait to see a manufacturer come up with a handheld using this chip. Now with uh, the Odin 2, we've actually got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is an awesome performer but just seeing this jump in performance is absolutely amazing. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel because I've got some videos coming up soon with this chipset. And if there's anything else you wanna see running, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in picking up a device with the Gen 3, I'll leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.